Hey, Team USA gets back at it as we're trying to head toward the the uh, World Cup next, though well, this year actually qualifying happening right now. Let's find out where we stand and what we got to do from our expert Rock the Mic finalist, Katie Goodman, joining us. Katie, welcome aboard. Glad to have you out. Thank you. How's it going this morning? Katie, how are you doing? Now, for those that follow you on social, you uh. You had a pretty rough soccer accident. <laughs> you tried to give yourself a concussion. I think you did give yourself a concussion. I, you still need to go get that checked out. How is how's Are you that? Really going to bring that up right now? <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, you put it on social, so then this is it's world yeah. it's world news. Once you put it on social, depending on the algorithm you know, that hits. How's your eye? How's your head? <laughs> oh, it's good. You know, that's I do that for street cred. So you got to get your street cred. Mess with me on the field. Yeah, it's like exactly. Kobe going you know, to the okay. Rucker. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I got really good at makeup for about two weeks. I became Pablo Picasso. I had to learn how to blend out colors, cancel out blues and purples and greens. And it's finally faded quite a bit. So it's almost back to the normal makeup routine. But my goodness, for a minute there, I would have to stare at my face for like two hours in the mirror. And I was sick of it. I was sick of it, sick of it. So anyway, I'm really glad that that's over. Um, I did get an MRI. I mean, excuse me, a CT. So no concussion or brain bleed. So we're awesome. good to go there. Just prolonged symptoms. So oh. just having to sit out for a little bit longer. But for the Respect. most part, I'm functioning. I'm good. Yeah. Well, you never took a day off afterwards. Bang anybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you? You're young, Katie. Have you seen Urban Cowboy? I have. Yeah. Fox? yeah. I, it's only because my sisters are older. So you, they're really, really into that. Are you team Pam or team Sissy? Sissy. Thank you. She's, <laughs> Sissy's ride or die. I, Sissy's I, a ride or die. Right? And she can tow your car it's home if you break down, which was it's <laughs> always, true, it's true. always a benefit. And I bet Sissy's the type that would get a black eye playing some soccer. There you go. I, I would think identify. Birds of a feather. Yeah. All right, big game. Yeah. Yeah. Your car home, though. That's not my thing. <laughs> Me either. Yeah. Quite is, this a, yeah. is this a big game? I mean, how big is yeah, El Salvador what, what got in tonight? the grand scheme of things? Does it do or die? Uh, it's so. Here's the thing. We're kind of in the middle of the World Cup qualifiers. We still have six games left. Mm. If we don't beat El Salvador, we really kind of don't deserve to go to the World Cup. We got to beat them. Let's Damn! Don't that. be so and mean. I know. It might okay. be the concussion doing this. Okay. But, well, Katie, uh, well, Katie it, it begs the question. Everything on the concussion. This does beg the question. Do they deserve to go? I mean, is this a soccer team or, uh, that is adequate to at least be competitive to maybe threaten in pool play? Or is this just another one of the teams that we've grown to expect over the last 10 years? Mm. Right. <laughs> well, I absolutely think they deserve to go. Okay. I think they're going to take a win with El Salvador. They have given Canada a lot of a lot of hell recently. They've beat them in the past. A lot of whether we win against Canada depends on if we're on our home turf or away. That pretty much always almost indicates whether it's a win or a loss because of the climate. Um, and when it comes to El Salvador, they're just one of those teams that they can get a little tricky. They can kind of just sneak it in easily um, off the wing. And so it's one of those things where if we're not coming out pretty strong within the first 10, 15 minutes, you're going to know. You're going to know that this is not going to be a good game. Um, so, yeah, we have three games this week. We have this Ecuador, week? Canada, Honduras. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah within okay. the next seven days. How is that? Are they days. all qualifiers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like, there's that's a total of six qualifiers left. <laughs> that's brutal in the in the world of soccer because a guy, for, the person, for the people that don't follow soccer, like, there's no coming out of the game and getting a quick breather to get ready for the fourth quarter. In soccer, once they take you out, you're done for the game. So to play three games in seven days for soccer, your studs have to go 90. So how do they, how do they juggle that? How do they juggle that? And where and where are aren't we in first right now as it stands? Are we still in first in our group? We're in second. We're okay. in second place. We're one point behind Canada and one point ahead of Mexico. Okay. So it's one of those things where if we don't beat the 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 lower ranked teams at home just you know i wouldn't say give it up but it's going to be a lot harder to get uh, into the world cup if we don't just win the easy games you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah it's one of those things where a lot of it depends on so for example i've, I've read a lot about this and 
they're really putting all of their best players forward for these home games because they know they have to win these ones mm-hmm. in order to progress. Whereas Canada, they know it's going to be hard either way. So you're probably going to see a couple of um, other forwards get chances, maybe not starting, but getting a lot of minutes in because they need to make sure that they win that game against Honduras in the end. And um, yeah, and it's one of those things at the end of seven days, they may not look tired, but they are. That's where you're going to have a lot yeah. of simple, easy mistakes and things like that. So, but What's our depth yeah, like? Do, something to watch. do we have the kind of depth that can stand a three-game week like this? I believe we do. I believe we do. Uh, we have Brendan Aronson. We have Pulisic. We have Ricardo Pepe. We have so many really strong forwards. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to be we're going to be okay. Um, the only thing is we have Matt Turner in the goal, and he has conceded three goals within the last five games, which is kind Gee. of a lot considering. That's a lot. And yeah, and so they wanted to replace him with Zach Steffen, but Zach Steffen is having back issues. So it's one of those things where especially when you're getting uh, into later in the season in the European leagues, and then you have World Cup qualifiers going on, that's where you see all of these injuries. Tim Weah is just barely making it back with um, after his hamstring pool, but he p- apparently played like 60 minutes in his last uh, game. So mm-hmm. I think he'll be okay, but you're not going to see him playing full 93 games in a row. She is Katie Goodman, our soccer analyst. Make sure you're following her on Twitter. I am Katie Goodman. Uh, now, Tell us, I don't know enough about the coaching situation. Is is the coach in good stead? Is this one of those, good we question. don't qualify, you're gone, and we're going to reevaluate where you are? Where do we stand, at least in the in the uh, administration of Team USA? Oh, man, that is hard to say because things have been so unpredictable. Mm-hmm. And he his style of play is very, very American. And while we want to be very true to our American heritage, maybe it doesn't hurt to bring in an outside source from other countries uh, to help us in that way, but right? So it didn't work with Clint. Well, did, I didn't think Klinsman should have been fired, but did it? Do they feel like we've been down that road already? Do we want to do it again? Yeah, I mean, it, it's so hard to say because um, you know the World Cup is four years apart. True. And so it's it's there's so much time that happens in between, and you just kind of. The national team gets these little games here and there. They don't have all of this time to train together like an MLS or European league team. So it is really hard for these national team coaches Mm -hmm. to really take something and really make it cohesive and move it forward. So I don't know. I think that if you see him lose to El Salvador or Honduras, if if they don't make World Cup calls, or excuse me, if they don't make the World Cup. He's gone. he, He might get canned. Yeah. And he just got there, right? He hadn't been there that he long. Been there a while. He was, okay. Yeah, he was there for the last one. Okay. Um, and he did okay. He did okay, you know. Um, but so I don't know. I, I think uh, it's still one of those things, high pressure, high intense situation. So if he doesn't make things happen or if you continue to see them losing really weird games, you know, like El Salvador or Honduras, then – um, then that's going to be an, an issue. Um, but what I love is Pulisic actually was quoted in an interview. He was talking about how people, all teams, hate to play Americans, whether they're great, whether they're terrible teams. And it's because we're so physical. We have that American spirit. We're always mixing mm. things up. You never know what's going to happen. Um, so I really do love that perspective. It seems to be kind of the energy coming from the team. And they're really not even worried about Canada right now. They're just trying to focus on El Salvador and taking home those easy wins. So uh, let me get this straight. So the American version of soccer is we're a little bit more physical and not quite as precise. Would that be the uh, uh, term? Yeah, I don't know but, if I agree with that. Because I don't quite understand it. So, <clears throat> And when we talk about the European style and the American style and what we, we should be playing, uh, Describe what the European style is for those of us that are unaware. It's beautiful. Right. So um, Americans tend to be very physical, fast. They get up outside the wingers. You're going to see more long balls, whereas yes. in Brazilian soccer yes. might be more ticky-tocky. So small triangles here and there kind of moving in little little pockets throughout the field, mm-hmm. whereas European soccer uses the full horizontal of the field you'll see a lot of switching you'll see a lot of in and out yeah so and that's what are we good at key differences there we're good at kicking it up um, all the way down the field and then chasing it which is why so we're still behind soccer yeah we're, we're, which we're, is why we're behind so we go one-on-one kick it deep get a couple <laughs> athletes out there and see if they can is that yes. am i describing yes. it appropriately i mean 
it's close, but I don't want to go that hard. Okay, on okay. You know, they're pretty good at getting wide, getting some good crosses in. Like, you know, Pulisic is amazing. He's been playing uh, for Chelsea for so long, so he's bringing some of Texas, that. Texas, right? Isn't he a Texas? In. Is he from uh, Texas? Yes, yeah, yes. I think he's a Dallas kid. Yeah. Good old Texas. Yeah, mm-hmm. starting FC Dallas. So did Pepe, and now Pepe's going to the Bundesliga. So Bundesliga, oh, nice. Is- we need those. Yes. Uh, no disrespect to the MLS, Katie. I know you follow them. But, you know, if we're going to get over the hump and get to a quarterfinal, semifinal, our guys have to play with the big boys. They have to. You can't go from Absolutely. MLS playing the World Cup. It's just – it's it, it just don't weigh out. It doesn't, it's not going to work. To not- I totally agree. But I have to play devil's advocate here. Okay. Because every time we get a really good player, they're pulled off to these European leagues. So then we get this rap of not being a great league, but yet we're pumping out all of these great True. players in the academy so it's True. not that what we're bringing up here is bad it's just that the talent is being pulled away which again i don't think is bad we do need that european influence we need to we need more chances to play against these teams and bring our level up um i would love to see one day where where yeah. our u.s men's national team squad has 20 or 25 european players versus 14 so but then at the same time how does the mls ever grow so we you know, you're chasing your tail. It's also right, but I don't know if you guys heard this. Insignia just signed a 13 million dollar contract with Toronto, and they're like the 13th team. They were ranked 13th in the in the league. Um, so that's a huge thing because he was the captain of the Italian national team. This guy is not going out. He's actually in his prime. So that's a really huge. Deal. Yeah, because most of the time they're um, old when they come over. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm-hmm. Great point, Katie. Mm-hmm. Katie Goodman they're joining us. Way out. Absolutely. If you're looking for something to cheer for tonight, 6 o'clock, USA, take it on El Salvador. You can check it on ESPN+. Plus. Make sure you're following Katie on the on the uh, socials. It's always a pleasure catching up, Katie. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Good to see you. Katie Goodman right here. You're yeah. our soccer insider and our Rock the Mic finalist. We're glad she's here. We'll make sure we she'll be back as we continue our quest. Where is I it? Didn't... Is it UAE, Dubai? Where Where exactly is the World Cup? It's in the... Uh... It's in the... Uh, I can't say it. Cut, 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 Cutter. Oh, it's in Cutter. Okay. Cutter. As we head toward the desert. But it's going to be in November because Cutter is like 150 in the summer. So it'll only be like 110 <laughs> yeah. when they finally play.